Hello everyone, it is Felicia Bender, the Practical Numerologist. We are doing a dive into the personal year cycle. We are talking about the number five personal year in this video. All right, so if you are new to numerology, you don't even know what the, you know, like, what is this? <laughs> what is the personal year? If you don't know, please take a look at the description box. I will have a descriptor there. I'm not going to go through that. I am thinking you just want the lowdown. You want the down and dirty on the five personal year if you've clicked on this video. So that's what we are going to do. So in numerology, we believe we go through these nine year cycles. It's like knowing the theme to your party. And uh, if you're in your five personal year, we are going to look at the optimal elements here. Then we're going to look at maybe where there's some, I don't know, little challenge points, caveats. And we have to think about numerology as being not just jibber jabber, right? It's not just talking about it. It actually has to do with energy. It has to do with uh, the energy that is supporting us during an individual year that we're having. And um, the, the beauty of it is, the reason I do this is because you're, you're feeling it anyway, usually. And yet to be able to optimize it, to be able to have an understanding around it and to really use the energy rather than having it use you, uh, it really helps to have this framework. So that's what this video is all about, giving you a framework about how to give yourself a permission slip to do the things that are in the flow of the energy and then to give you a heads up uh, about things that might, yeah, maybe not so much, right? <laughs> so the five personal year, you are in the midpoint of a nine year cycle, the personal years one through nine. You're right there in the middle, right? You can visualize it. You're at the five. And uh, this is really a pivotal year. Numerologically speaking, I think the five year kind of gets a little bit of the underplay, but I'd like to, I don't know, bring it up and overplay it for a second in terms of its importance, in terms of it being a pivot point because if nothing else, this year is all about change. Something dramatic is going to change for you within your life. And if it doesn't, the change will, it, it, the change will be that nothing has changed and you're feeling that, that um, feeling of being stuck feeling of being tethered and confined and restricted even more so uh, by the end of the year if you haven't pivoted, right? All right. So basically the five personal year, the key themes, the key energy that is moving you uh, through the year has to do with freedom. It has to do with change and it has to do with facing fears. So I always like to frame it in terms of what is the question that you're asking yourself this year and what the universe is really asking of you, right? It's uh, kind of that, that uh, ladder, <laughs> that ladder that we get to experience during a year. So the question for you is what does freedom look and feel like to me and how do I create more of it in my life? Because after last year, which was all about the work, all about reviewing your life's business plan, which was all about kind of getting serious, foundationalizing yourself, getting the, getting the, getting that foundation set so that this year you can really fly. Um, you can really have a solid base from which to explore your levels of freedom. So that is the ultimate for the five personal year. The goal really is to explore how to face those fears and how to be open and receptive to dramatic change and maybe have a little fun while you're doing it because it really is fun, fearlessness, adventure. It is a year set up for sensual experience and for experience with capital letters, right? It is the year that is known in numerology as the time for travel. It's the time for trying new things. I always say it's your year of saying yes, right? If you're someone who's like, oh no, I don't, oh no, I can't, mm, no, I don't, uh-uh, not this year. <laughs> This year it's like, sure, let me, tr I'll try that. Right. Let's give it a go. Let's, let's try that new place I've never been to. Instead of going to the vacation that to that one spot that we've always gone through, uh, gone to forever, let's go somewhere different. Let's shake it up. Let's do something. 
right? Let's just, let's like explore, let's see, let's, let's just, I don't know, um, air on experience. <laughs> and sometimes it feels that way. And yet it is a fun, frenetic adventure. Uh, at least it's meant to be this year. Now, of course, we're going to talk about the pros and cons. And yet in the bring it on category, it's all set up for if you're if you're on the fence about whether to plan that trip or or do that uh do that excursion oh my gosh this is your year to absolutely do that okay uh give yourself the permission slip the golden ticket whatever you need to give yourself permission to go travel go experience go explore so it's about really feeding your curiosity anything outside of the box uh, it's often a year where you get kind of hit with new people new experiences new stuff that can kind of knock you a little bit off center um, some people um, what i will say is this let me back up for just a second so oftentimes i'll work with people in their and they say, well, the five personal year is supposed to be this huge, great, amazing party. And for me, it was horrible or, I'll, you know, or the other way around. So what I want to say is this, it's never going to be horrible unless you make it that way. And yet why people might say that is because it's not really in their wheelhouse to step off the beaten path right? It's really, it's more of a fear factor of them exploring or, uh, or something like that. And on top of that, what I always find that in a five personal year, whatever is our biggest fear factor at this moment in time in our life is very much, uh, just to, to loosely quote J Joseph Campbell says, you know, our, the the door or the room in which our uh, biggest fear resides is the door or the room that we need to walk through or walk into. I don't know why I'm mixing those metaphors, but I don't know. You get my you get my general drift here. So it's it is facing those fears, and it really is a year where, I mean, I'm not really over exaggerating it can be this beautiful time where your biggest fear comes in and then you really stand stand strong and look at it in the eye and it's very much seriously like dorothy in the wizard of oz what is that movie like three and a half hours long she three and a half hours it takes her to to figure out that all she needs to do is have a bucket of water and throw it on the wicked witch and she'll melt right? So it's that same sort of idea. You know, you keep running, you keep avoiding, you keep, you know, di you know, trying to not deal with it. And that you, this year will uh, potentially be a year where whatever it is, is going to need to be dealt with. And then when you do, it's like this amazing relief. It's like, how could that have ever been such a big deal? Right? So um, that's, kind of what can happen in a five year. So uh, it's uh, again, outside of the box, but it's it's testing those levels of, of restriction, fear, and all of that. It's about sex and, and sensuous experience. I always say that if you are single and not seeing anyone right now, now this year is not the year to put a ring on it, okay? <laughs> it's, it's the time to, to have fun, to explore. Uh, you may even meet someone with that kind of long-term potential. And yet I would say, give it a little moment. Give it some time because the five has more of the more of that impulsive energy uh, around it, and again, it's all about new experiences. It's going to test your adaptability. It's going to uh, ask you very much like the three personal year to to ask yourself what does give you pleasure, what is fun to you, what what you know what is your level of exploration that you want to lean into i always think about it not in a dark way and yet in a five personal year it's a great time to go if i were to die tomorrow what 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 is today like i mean who do i do is there something i need to say that i haven't said to a loved one is there you know something ultimately that i really need to focus on so that i could do it and you know it's it's really kind of a time to really look at it like you are up against you you're up on that precipice and looking and going where you know at the end of my life do i want to say all the things that i didn't do 
or do I want to go, wow, that was a, that was a <laughs> funny, funny one that I did, but I did it. Right. And so it's that sort of energy around this year. So it is, uh, it can be really exciting and it is all about whenever the five shows up, it's about freedom. Yes. And yet it's about freedom through self discipline. So, uh, again, draw in some of that four energy from your four personal year last year to have something to stand on so that you can, whatever you are doing, it can have a positive outcome. Um, rather than, you know, is freedom just doing whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, whenever you want to do it? Not really. That's really more self-indulgence, right? So it's really that interesting line between what is totally self-indulgent and, and kind of a usury in terms of freedom and what is that actual beautiful level of personal freedom that you can experience yourself and that you can also show others uh, the, the beauty of that um, by your actions and by what you do. So it really is about getting out of your comfort zone overall. So if we look at that, then uh, what what can you expect um, that might, I don't know, bump up against that and be a little bit of a caveat. So it can be a time where you feel really unfocused, where you feel more erratic, more misdirected, much more fearful, much more stagnant. So what is the opposite of freedom and bring all that in? about what you might feel. It can feel as though you are much more tethered, much more stuck, much, and those things are coming up. It's like, how do you explore your levels of freedom even within certain confining situations, right? That can be something that is coming up in a five personal year. It can uh, feel kind of emotional, emotionally volatile, kind of an emotional roller coaster. So attempting to kind of, again, get some confines around that, some healthy confines. Uh, there are times when we can be easily distracted uh, during a five personal year. I always think about the dogs, right? Where this, you know, they're going along and then squirrel. <laughs> And they're off. Uh, it's kind of the, the way we can be in a five personal year. It can be a year that really, oh my gosh, procrastination, right? Oh, I don't feel like it. Or I wish I didn't have to, have to, have to, have to, all this stuff. And so it's that kind of quagmire of that, that feeling that where you can be overthinking, overly analytical about how it feels, to you or for you, um, which is good on one level and then can be detrimental on the other, depending on the extremes that it's taken into, uh, right? So uh, it can be just the opposite of that freedom loving five, uh, where you feel a bit more reclusive, a bit more um, too sensitive to stimulation. And so it's uh, attempting to kind of find a happy medium about, about that. And ultimately on, again, the other end of the spectrum with the five uh, personal year, it can bring in really heightened levels of feeling restricted. And I'll give you an example. It can be a year where you've been really, um, you've been working on your marriage for I don't know how long, and you're finally getting to that place where you really want and need a divorce. And yet, um, something's going on. Maybe there is someone has a health issue and you have to put it on hold, or maybe, um, you still have to work a few things out about the, the kids or about a job or something that is standing in the way of you, uh, gaining that freedom that you would like to get through, uh, through a divorce. I'm just using that one example. It's just an easy one to, to use as an example. You can use all kinds of examples here, but you know, so that maybe you might end up getting that divorce at the end of the year, or maybe it'll bleed over into your six, which is all about relationships and evaluation. And yet maybe the five personal year is when you, uh, I don't know, have an affair or um, are more, or wish you would, or wish you could. <laughs> You know, something of that nature. Uh, again, the five brings in that desire for uh, for experience, um, for that kind of sensual experience as well. And so it, it just to go back to what I was saying is that when I work with people, often what I will find is that they feel very tethered 
uh, during a five personal year and they're wanting uh, to, to taste more of that freedom. They're wanting to travel. They're wanting to do those things that will allow them freedom. So um, overall on the optimal range, this is again, a pivot point. Um, usually by the end of a five personal year, you will look back and go, holy cow, I can't believe this is what I'm doing and where I am. So lean into it. Uh, enjoy the ride.